This is Debt Free in 30, where every week we talk to industry experts about debt, money, and personal finance. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. After many years of low interest rates, interest rates are now increasing, and many experts believe we'll see continued interest rate increases in Canada well into 2018. If the Bank of Canada increases interest rates, mortgage interest rates will continue to go up. That's not an immediate problem if your mortgage is locked in for the next five years, but if you have a variable rate mortgage, or if your mortgage is due for renewal in the near future, rising interest rates could have a significant impact on your monthly cash flow. We tend to think that a 1% increase in your mortgage interest rate is no big deal, but if you have a mortgage at 3% interest, a 1% interest rate increase actually means that your interest rate is now one-third higher. It's one over three higher, and that's 33%, which is huge. Here's another way to look at it. If you have a $500,000 mortgage at a 3.25% interest rate, amortized over 25 years, you're paying $2,430.83 a month. An increase to 4.25%, which is only a one percentage point increase, or 100 basis points, as the economists would say, that puts your monthly payment up to $2,698.30. Now, again, that may not seem like much, but that's an extra $267.47 a month. Do you have an extra $267.40 per month in your cash flow? And just so you know, an extra $267 a month over a 25-year mortgage is more than $80,000 in extra payments over the life of the mortgage. That's huge, and that's why mortgage interest rate increases are such a big deal. So you want to keep your interest rate as low as possible, but if your mortgage is coming up for renewal, how do you know if you're getting the best deal? What if your bank just renews you at the rate they think they can get away with charging you? That could cost you a bunch of money in the future. Today on Debt Free in 30, my guest has a new tech startup that helps homeowners explore their mortgage options. He also has some thoughts on fixed versus variable rates and how new financial technology is impacting our financial decision making. So with that background, let's get started and meet my guest. Who are you and what do you do? Hi, it's Brent Hughes and uh, our business is Monitor My Mortgage. And we created a software platform, uh, app software platform, both desktop and uh, and mobile to manage a little bit different than than where you were talking. We manage in-term mortgages. So the industry chases the renewal or the net new mortgage. We assist consumers on a day-to-day basis for exactly what you were talking about as far as when rates change, how does that impact me today? I don't want to wait five years. Um, It hasn't factored in what I may have as far as life changes, new baby, job change. Uh, So we are very focused on the interim mortgage part of the uh, business. Interesting. Well, great. Thanks for for being here, Brett. And I want to dive into that uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, But before I do, I want to give my audience my standard disclaimer, and and that's this. I don't pay guests to appear on this show, and guests don't pay me to appear on this show. Uh, Debt Free and 30 is not an infomercial for my guests or for any product, so I invite guests onto the show because I think they have useful, practical information to share with my listeners. So you're not going to hear any affiliate links or anything like that mentioned in the show. So with that disclaimer, uh, tell us a bit more about, about this product. So it's called Monitor My Mortgage, and you said it's more targeted at not the renewal market, but someone who has an existing mortgage. So ex- explain what you mean by that. I mean, if I've got an existing mortgage, why do I need any additional information? Probably that's the simplest way to, to sort of explain why we created this software was I've done it as a consumer. So one of the most frustrating things to me was to listen on the radio and hear uh, Bank of Canada is changing changing its rate, which is which is great to hear. But I don't actually know how that impact impacted me over my different mortgages over the years. So I'd quickly pick up the phone, call my broker. They would tell me to to check on what my amortized value is and what my penalty was. And if at that point they had that information, they would then be able to provide me uh, a solution or a a stay put uh, type scenario. So (laughs) that to me is frustrating because I've sort of abdicated responsibility for for what generally is my largest liability into the hands of somebody else. Um, I don't think I've ever had a call from any of my lenders to tell me that I should be looking at my mortgage midterm. So so we designed the software to do the calculation of the penalties based on your current 
situation. So you have the, the scenario you gave where potentially somebody could be up to another $265 a month, um, and where is that money going to come from? This way, based on your notification level, so you decide what's the minimum savings that, that interests you to at least open the door to start to, to discuss changing your mortgage in term, or over the life of the term, what's the savings target you're looking for, not on a monthly basis, but over the remaining term? Because there, there are times where the software may say, you know, we can save you $1,000 net after your penalty, but you're about to get on a plane and, and head off with the family for a vacation probably not the greatest time for you to make that decision. Now, when you return from that vacation, it may, may be an interesting $1,000 to save, but it, it provides you the savings and the notifications based on your specific circumstance and your specific mortgage. So it takes two to three minutes to put your current mortgage in, and then the system runs. You can run it on demand by, by simply pushing a button, um, or it runs automatically for you nightly and provides you notifications. And so, so it was a consumer-driven piece of software. If I can add one more item, Doug. Yep. The question I met with um, uh, a professional mortgage, long-term mortgage professional, and he drew me a very simple drawing, and it was a, a uh, horizontal line with a vertical line at each end. And he said, that's the life of a mortgage. He said, and he did a circle at the beginning and said, this is when consumers make decisions on mortgages, and this is when they make decisions at the end. And his business was related to renewal and, and uh, net new mortgages. And I said to him, put an X where your competitors are. And he put an X across the, the beginning circle and an X at the end. And I said to him, our software manages in between that. So every day you're ignoring your customers, we're helping them. We're providing them information on where their mortgage is every day. So I said, and when it comes time for them to either make a, an early renewal there's a purchase, you know, they've sold their house, they've got a net new purchase, they'll have the up-to-date information of where their position is. Because most people don't even know what their penalty is or how to figure it out. A, a variable uh, penalty is very easy to understand of three months interest. Um, but if you're trying to figure out the interest rate differential, then find the information on your lender's website and then do the calculation. Most people won't do that. They won't find that out until they're sitting with their lawyer on the payout statement. So, so this provides them the day-to-day -day peace of mind, really, so, of where they where they stand. So the way it works, I go into this this program, this app on my phone, and I punch in some basic information. You know, how much is owing on my mortgage, what the interest rate is when it comes up for renewal, and then who, is your lender? who, who my lender is, and what else do I have to put into it? That so those are your That's obviously when it started. You know, what's the term? What's your frequency of payment? Uh, lender is critical because as, as much as everybody thinks the lenders are fairly similar on their penalties, they're actually not. There are some, some extra charges here and there. Once you have that information, there's defaults on your notification. So minimum savings per month, minimum savings over the term to, to be notified. Uh, early renewal, when you want to be notified on your renewal dates. Rate changes, so um, when the Bank of Canada makes a uh, rate change, you want to know uh, and be notified. All of those are, are defaults, but you can adjust them based on your circumstance. After that, if it takes you three minutes, um, that would be the, the, the most. And, and then so the system runs. Gotcha. So I've set up my alerts, and it says, oh, guess what, you know, because... I can't remember when it was in the summer whenever the Bank of Canada raised rates and then they did it again in, in September. I get some kind of alert that says, ding, 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 uh, rates have gone up. So here is you know some potential advice for you. So the, the, the app might suggest that I'm with Bank ABC now and I've got three years left to go on my mortgage. But if I switch to a different lender, I could save money. Is that the kind of practical thing it's going to tell me? In the end, we're not a mortgage broker, so we, uh, we wouldn't make a lender-specific recommendation. What the system will do, the system recognizes the different available rates in the market across, I wish I knew, I should probably have the number, but 70-plus but different combination of different lenders and different rates. If it identifies an opportunity for you, it allows you to connect to one of our vetted brokers across Canada who we have a relationship with. Once you connect to that broker, the broker is going to contact you by email or phone. The broker now knows your current state mortgage, so it knows here's what, everything that you have in place. Here's the information that created an opportunity for you. So your, 
you're on a current five year, you have two years left, the rate difference is going to be about two basis points or uh, 20 basis points, and your penalty has been calculated. Here's the information. So you don't have to spend the first 10 or 15 minutes updating the broker on your current state or the opportunity you're interested in. Then the, the broker, the mortgage professionals, will do their job because they're going to look and say, lender A may have a better rate, but you've just told me you're changing jobs in the next year um, or you're adding to the family. And, and there's just certain, you still have life circumstances that have to be factored in. You may have a, a windfall coming, um, whether it's an inheritance or something. So you don't want to, you have the ability to pay down a mortgage a little bit early, earlier. You want to make sure you're working with a lender that gives you that ability at the lowest possible cost. Gotcha. So the broker as a, will make the recommendation. Gotcha. And so as a consumer, I'm not paying anything for this app. Is that correct? Correct. The app, the software is free. Um, so, so how do you make, how do you make money then? We have a relationship with the brokers we have in place. Lenders pay brokers a finder's fee, for lack of a better term. So the lender will uh, pay the broker and we share in that, that split with the broker. So our, uh, there is a, you know, one of the challenges I have is when people have a vested interest in, in, in trying to sell me something. In this case, you can use the software from, from, you know, day one and never connect to one of our brokers. Take that information back to your lender and say, I know that my penalty is, is roughly X. I think I should be doing something, and away you go. You can take it to your current broker and take the same information. Um, the question I would say is, you know, and I think I've written some blogs on this. You know, when was the last time your broker or lender called you to in in term on your mortgage? And the answer is they don't. They have a vested interest to keep you in the position you're in. So what our software does is say, here's a vetted broker. If you'd like to have a conversation, if there is no commitment, no cost, no hooks. Um, at least have the conversation and understand your options. And then if you use one of our brokers, then uh, the lender fee will be split with us and the broker. Gotcha. And obviously, I, I'm the one making that decision. If the broker can't get me a better deal than what I could get somewhere else, then I'm not going to do it. So I'm I'm completely in control, I guess, is, is what you're saying. So, um, okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. And I, I get the business model. Your goal is that um, lots of people will be using it. Lots of people will see that there are potential savings. They'll reach out to one of the people in your network to do it. But if they don't, fine, they can they can use it completely for, for free and, and do what they want with the information. So, okay, so let's, let's uh, talk about, uh, well, I want to get into interest rates, but before we do that, what you're describing this this app that you've got i guess the the current buzzword is <clears throat> is fintech this is a fintech application a financial technology thing that uh, that's that's the buzzword if you want to start a company and raise a few million dollars in an ipo just call it fintech and uh, just like the internet in the year 2000 right everyone will jump on it so if it were only that easy there you go eh i live in a simplified world obviously where where i think everything is is real easy so how do you see applications like yours or fintech in general impacting the way we make financial decisions because you described how it used to be once every five years i would walk into the bank and they would tell me what my new mortgage interest rate was going to be and i'd sign the piece of paper that's no longer the way it has to be so what do you see as the future for applications not just in the the mortgage area but you know fintech applications in general and how we're going to make financial decisions in the future and, and what that's going to do to the financial industry in the in in general yeah i think it's it doesn't just start with the financial industry for me i mean if i'm looking to uh to hire a a, a taxi or a car to go from a to b um, we used to stand on the corner we wave our arms and, and hopefully somebody would stop um you know Obviously, the largest of the players out there right now put in software into people's hands that provide them visibility, access to information, um, and, and a level of governance. So, so the uh, I won't say their name, but they they change the way people hire a car. And I think that that's ultimately what our goal was. If you can put information into people's hands to make it easier for them to make an educated decision, it's just a natural way to, to look. It may not always be about saving money. I mean, I think that that's a little bit of a misnomer when with some of the, the fintech um, businesses that are out there, it's all about saving money. 
sometimes your description at the beginning talked about in five years, you know, changing rates today may not impact you, but in five years they are, and, and where are you going to find that? Um, I always uh, did a simple calculation um, when I closed my eyes at night. I said, what are my total assets worth? What are my total liabilities worth? Close your eyes. As long as, one, as long as my assets are greater than my liabilities, I should be able to get a good night of sleep. Just by getting the information in people's hands faster, I think they're going to make better educated decisions. I know I have retirement goals coming up. Um, the lenders, many of the banks are, are creating and, and the wealth advisors are creating tools that give me better visibility. Um, but in the end, the decision is still mine. And that's, that's, I hope, what the goal of any of these fintech companies are. I think there's, uh, there's always suspicion that there's a vested interest. But I think in the end, as long as the consumer recognizes it's, it's still their decision. So give you good information, give you accurate information, give it to you quickly. Um, when you want it, uh, I'll take that any day of the week, and, and then I can make a good decision. So I think that should be the goal of most of those businesses and, and, um, and our business. Yeah, and that's an interesting way you describe it. So, uh, I mean, I understand what you're saying with respect to, in effect, getting a taxi. Um, I may not pay less for the new service than the old service, or I may, but I'm able to see what kind of car is coming. I can say I want a big car or a small car. I, I know exactly when it's going to arrive. So it's not just about the money. It's it's putting a lot more information into my hands. So, um, okay, so let, let's take the case then of somebody who has a variable interest rate mortgage. So you already mentioned the case of someone who has a fixed rate mortgage. There's still three more years to run on it. But with your app, it might tell me interest rates have gone down, and it's still better for me to get a different mortgage, pay the the penalties, the interest rates will be lower, it'll it'll help me. Um, does that thought process change at all when I have a variable interest rate mortgage, or is it you know pretty simple? Interest rates have gone down, you switch. How does how does it work with a variable rate? Yeah, it, so it's it's interesting because when we this this software was built over over a, you know, just over a year's period. And everybody said to us, oh, if this software was only built a couple of years ago, you would have had a lot more clients right off the start. And I said, why is that? They said, well, when rates go down, that's when, when savings are created. And I said, it actually was created for the opposite. It was created when rates start to go up. Um, as we know, debt level, consumer debt levels are high. You know, bankruptcy risks are high. So you, I want more information. A rising tide will float all boats is probably the nicest way to put it, but everybody's going to have a win when rates are going down. It's when rates are going up that I want the most information in my hands. With with the recent Bank of Canada announcements, um, a couple of changes over, you know, the interesting one for the first Bank of Canada announcement being in July, everybody was on vacation. So although you had an impact and, and our consumers were all notified, these rates changed, the activity by consumers was quite low. They, they, the system told them the rate went up. They had a variable rate. It immediately impacted them. So anybody on a variable immediately knows that the variable rates are changing or the prime has changed. So, so they have the information, but there wasn't a lot of activity because there was. It's in the middle of summer. You know, we didn't go through the greatest summer of the year, so there was a lot of other things going on. The September announcement will be different. And, and was different because all of a sudden that's the second rate increase in over a period. So um, now people are going to start to take notes saying, okay, what's the next announcement going to look like? So the software will tell you right away there's been a, there's been a, a change. Here's how it impacts you specifically. The decision now comes down to the consumer to pick up the phone and call you know, their lender, their broker, our broker, and, and say, Here's my circumstances. You know, here's my financial position. Here's um, my family position. Here's my goals. There, all those other things have to factor in. So it's just not an automatic where I think the great discussion after a rate announcement is, should I be on fixed or variable? <laughs> and, and the answer is, it's different for everybody. So um, you know, are you down to the last few years of paying off your mortgage or are you just getting into the market? So I think you... Um, the software will tell you that it's changed. It will give you the information specific to you. 
now you need to factor in the other variables to to make a decision. You know, do you go fixed? Do you go variable? I don't and, think either of us could tell the other person which is best. Yeah, and I think that's the key point: is you got to think. And so anybody who says, "Oh well, you should definitely go variable or you should definitely go fixed," doesn't really understand that there. Are, it's a multifaceted decision. And and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess for the last ten years, if you go back to I don't know, two thousand and eight or whatever, uh, you know that that time period, yeah, variable rates ended up being the correct decision for most people because interest rates kept going down and down and down. But going into a variable rate in June of two thousand and seventeen. Well, you know, with a couple of Bank of Canada rate increases and perhaps more to come, that that has not been as good a solution. However, as you correctly pointed out, if I've only got six months left to go on my mortgage or a year or two even, then the variable rate is probably less than the fixed rate. Maybe that that may or may not be true, but that that's why it's not as simple as, yeah, you pick one or the other. Um, how much longer you have to go on your, your mortgage certainly has an impact. Is there anything else that would impact that decision? I guess the creditworthiness of the, the borrower perhaps has an impact as well, or there, is there anything else? Absolutely. The creditworthiness is, is obviously going to be important. The, we've had a number of opportunities for our clients come through where you look at the rate that they were paying, and at first you look and go, how did they end up with such a high rate? You know, when you see the system, you see the opportunity that we pass on the broker. It doesn't doesn't make any sense. And it was the position they were in. It could have been a, a recent divorce. It could have been, you know, other financial uh, challenges they were having. So the opportunities now to, to get a better rate definitely exist for some of those people. The the big thing for me and people often, uh, either they haven't experienced it, but I did experience it, is change a job when you're with in a year before your mortgage is done, the lenders, they look at you very differently. And you can be with that same lender for years, but all of a sudden you've changed jobs because it's a new opportunity. It's a better role. It's a great opportunity. And you're six months into your new job and you go back to your bank and say, okay, it's time for uh, the renewal of my mortgage. And they say, well, you've only been in your job for six months. And you're going, wait a second. I've been with you for two mortgage renewals. I've been in the, my same old job for 10 years. And now all of a sudden you look at me, you know, with uh, with a little bit of uh, concern. It just doesn't make sense. So I always, anybody that ever asks me, I always say, make sure you're looking at your renewal time frame before you change that job. I think that's a an interesting factor that gets overlooked. Yeah, and we see that with credit reports even where you live. Now, of course, if you have a mortgage, you're probably living in the house you live in, and so you're not moving around frequently. But yeah, you've you've lived at the same house for 10 years, and then you move. That can have a negative impact on your credit score. Now, if, if everything else is positive, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. But you're right. If you've switched jobs and as a result, you know, moved to a different town and, and therefore you're living in a different place, those are a couple of changes that may not be perceived favorably by the automated credit scoring machine that uh, governs all of our lives. So it's it's certainly something you got to be aware of. So. So, okay, so uh, final point then, and I think we've hit on some some important things here. What final practical advice then do you have for people who are, you know, navigating what has become a much more volatile housing market and and mortgage market and how we should go about weighing our options and and making our informed choices? Is it, is it really as simple as you got to think and and look at all the alternatives? Yeah, I think it's it really is probably that simple, and, and you know, obviously, our software provides you a certain level of information. There's other software, there's other contact points. Um, whether it's uh, uh, it's just reading, staying informed is really all I can say. It's, it's that if we've abdicated, well, one of the things that used to make me crazy is people would get excited when their cell phone or mobile bill went up by you know, $10, 15 $25 a month. And they were quickly jumping on the, the so-called loyalty line to, to have a discussion with their carrier and, and would be very frustrated. And yet our largest, generally our largest liability and one of our biggest payments every month is going towards our mortgage. Um, so if there's tools um, or information out there to keep you informed, 
I would say don't assume that others are watching it for your best interest. Become informed, and at that point, um, at least you have the tools to uh, to do something about it, and then you need to decide you know which path you would go from there. So, but there there are some great tools out there, and I think um, the ostrich approach that we've all taken, and I can raise my hand around our mortgage of burying it in a the bottom drawer of a file cabinet, doesn't need to be that way. Let's you know let's make sure we understand, especially in changing. Um, rate environment, whether we're in the best situation we should be in for the coming years. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a great way to end it. I totally agree that you got to look out for yourself. You are the most motivated person to look out for yourself. And you're right, your house is probably the biggest expenditure you will ever make in your entire life. And therefore, your mortgage payments over the life of that are the most money you will ever spend. Uh, in fact, you spend more on the mortgage than you spend on the house because you're you've got interest tacked onto it. So so keeping track of where that all uh, you know pans out is is critically important. So so well that that's fantastic. So Brent, how can people find the app that we've been talking about today? So we're we're available both uh on uh, both Google Play as well as um the App Store. Um you can also there's a desktop version at our website. I'm not sure whether <laughs> I can share that. Yes, go ahead. Tell us tell us what the website is. It's just monitormymortgage.com. So all one word, monitormymortgage.com. But it's available in, in uh, all of the mobile uh, stores, and um, it's free. So we hope, uh, we hope that it can help you. And if uh, there's anything that anybody sees that they would like to see enhanced, that we'd, we're always open to uh, add and, and uh, adjust the, uh, the software based on recommendations. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being here, Brent. I appreciate the time. Excellent. So once again, Brent's app, Monitor My Mortgage, can be found at monitormymortgage.com. So that's all one word. And then, of course, if you search for that in the various different app stores, you can find it as well. Um, I think the next year is going to be much more vo- volatile for mortgage interest rates than what we've seen for the last few years. So whether or not you're using Brent's app, I think being aware of your options is is obviously very important. So that's our show for today. Full show notes, including a transcript and links to everything we discussed today, including uh, Brent's app, can be found at hoys.com. That's H-O-Y-E-S.com. Thanks for listening. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoys. That was Debt Free in 30. Thanks for listening. That was Debt Free in 30. 